right, guys, we're here today to talk about ECG lead placement and our actual technical aspects of that. First, you'll notice we have all our supplies gathered. We have gloves, alcohol preps, electrode strips, and our actual machine. We're going to go ahead, and the first thing we always do is identify our patient. Bob Smith. Notice I did not ask him if his name was Bob Smith because disoriented patients tend to agree to anything. So I'm going to wash my hands, which I've done offset, and I'm going to place my gloves because I am most important. My safety comes first. So even though this isn't an invasive procedure, we still always wear gloves. All right. So. Next, I'm going to take my alcohol preps. We do use alcohol preps to clean our lead sites because it both helps with adhesiveness and preps the patient. Um, we don't, it's not an invasive procedure, but we still are going to use them to cleanse. So I'm going to come over to my patient. Now, as you've noticed in your book, we, uh, when we place a 12 lead, we place a lead on each of the four limbs and we place our six um, pericordial leads. So what we're going to do is we are going to first start with our limb lead placement and the general area that we can place on the limb is the inside of the wrist but if that's if we're having some issues with that if we have trembling of the patient or anything like that we can also have an alternative site here near the shoulder closer in to the limb. So right here on the inside of the wrist. Now there, you're going to see a couple different types of electrodes. The ones we have today, we're always going to peel off, and we want the tab facing up towards the heart. Place. It's right here. Now, I'm going to prep my other arm. Same placement, tab facing up. Place our lead up towards the heart. All right, make sure I'm getting a good, firm seal. Now. We can do the same with the legs. We can move up towards the hips if we're, having, if we're missing a limb or if we're having some issues with, our, with leg tremors. Place the tops of the ankles, the general recommendation, and we're going to place our tab facing up. Want to make sure we get a good seal here. Our last lead, top of the ankle. The American Heart Guidelines for this are that you can place anywhere on the arms and the leg, but this is the usually both your easiest access point and what we see in our book. So we'll follow our book. Now I'm going to move on. We've gotten these placed. Now some of your machines, you can hook up just the four leads first and then a top grounding lead. But with this machine, we have to hook up both our, 12, our chest leads and our limb leads at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and place our pericordial leads. All right, so I'm gonna come down. Now in some gentlemen that have a hairy chest, we will wanna shave just the areas where we're gonna place our limb leads. I'm gonna come down here, and I'm gonna count down four intercostal spaces. So one, two, three, Four. I'm going to cleanse my site. I'm going to put what's referred to as V1 right here. Here the tabs are facing down. When we face them up, the electrodes tend to peel back. Now I'm going to go on the other side of the sternum, same area. Cleanse my site. Place my stick. Now, it may see, seem counterintuitive, but I'm going to actually place my, use my placement for V4 next, which is going to be mid-clavicular line and along my fifth intercostal space. I'm going to go one space down, and I'm going to find it with my finger. I'm going to place it right there. Now I have a reference. For V3, cleanse. I'm going to place V3 in between V4, V2 and V4. Now V5 is going to track right along 
that fifth on intercostal space. And then V6, our final lead. Now that we have everything placed, we can go ahead and hook up our leads. Don't panic about forgetting which lead goes where because they actually have it diagrammed for you very nicely right on our control. So we can split this into two to try to avoid tangling. Now remember, when we're working with right arm and left arm, it's going to be the patient's right, not our right. So this says RL, which is right leg. Go ahead and place it right here. And this is RA, so right arm. All right. Now this says LL for left leg. Here we have LA. Now that I have my limb leads positioned, I can move on. I'm going to notice I have V1. Go ahead and place V1. V2. V3. V4. V5, and V6. All right, I'm going to place this up here. Now, as you remember from Chapter 3, we learned about Eitenhoe's triangle, and that can help us identify if we're having issues with any of our leads. I'm going to walk over here. I'm going to go to Patient Info. And I'm going to use my information from the requisition form to enter Bob Smith and the birth date that I see on the form and that he gave to me. All right. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to press the start stop button. And I'm going to press it one more time. After I've looked here, everything seems to be appearing normally in my window. I'm going to allow the machine to analyze and collect the data and print my results. And we see in here that he is in what appears to be normal sinus rhythm. And that is how we do a traditional 12 lead.